Okay, so this video is about deep learning tool. So in the last video, we did segmentation wizard. Um, in the next two videos, we're going to be using the traditional deep learning tool, which is the um, more um, the more traditional deep learning tool, which allows you the most control over parameters in deep learning. So um, the first video here, I'm going to again take the same example of the denim fibers and we're going to do a deep learning um, training, uh, training a model on this. Um, and then the next video, I will do a um, image to image regression model. In the first video, a segmentation model. All right, so let's uh, get started here. What we need to do uh, for a, a, a deep learning model is we need some uh, uh, multi ROI trained um, already. So we need upfront, so different than the segmentation wizard, we need to upfront go to segmentation tab, create a new multi ROI, in this case with three classes, background, small fibers and large fibers. And let's call this the, um, the ground truth, because this is what we're providing. So in here, we can um, paint again, we can segment with the same tools as in segmentation wizard as the same example before. We're going to do it in 2D because we want only a single frame um, painted. Oh, and by the way, we can now make the, these colors. Let's make the red one large fibers and the blue. I like to make blue um, background usually and the yellow small fibers. All right, so let's make um, the, we need to fully paint the slice. Um, so let's make a local Otsu upper for the red fibers. Oops, that's not right. It's doing the lower. So again, we can do the undo button here. It's got one, one backward step of undo. Um, what we're gonna do, we want the upper Otsu paint brush. So we're going to be painting all these large fibers like that. And so you do need to do this carefully. So you can zoom in a bit. Do that, do that, do that. You can change the size of the brush, of course, also. All right. These are large fibers here. So we're painting all the large, larger fibers like that, that, that. But that's not good. So shift is removing and control. I'm keeping the control button pressed down while left clicking and dragging to paint these fibers. Okay, now the small fibers, also using the Otsu brush. So like this. Like this. Uh, there's a bit of noise being detected there. That's not good. Okay. So that's not bad, I guess. Oh, there's some small fibers down there. All right. And there, there's some red fibers, which I now need to add again. And this is now at the moment, the local Otsu. So let's just make it, oh, we do need to keep it lower because there's some, there's a, there's a bit of a mess there. Let's just remove all of that. We've got red and yellow. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Just red. Like that. All 
All right, so you need to fix these things. It takes a bit of getting used to, but once you're used to the tools, it's quite simple. Whoops, I've made a mistake here. There we go. Okay, that's that's not bad. Oh, and there's some small fibers up there. All right, and now we go to the background and we say, add all unlabeled voxels to class. So that's quite nice. And now we have one painted ground truth slice. We also need to um, go to the main tab and select this as our, oh, wait a minute, no, 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 that's not right. Hang on, Just delete that. We need to paint a region of interest, which is the mask. So this is the actual, this is the actual telling it which slice is actually the one that is painted. So we need to define a range or we can, we can just actually use a brush. So we need to tell the computer, whoops, we want to paint everything with this mask. So we want to make a, a paintbrush full. So this is the slice that we're using. And then we can also take, what is this? Oh, okay, so all the other pixels are are blue because I added all unlabeled voxels to class, but we're only gonna be using the masked slice. So it doesn't make a difference really. And what we need to do is we can, we can go and put the, just put the visibility of the blue off and go to the main tab and select a, a viewing frame, like a monitoring frame, which is what we're gonna be seeing while we are training to see how the model develops. All right, so in this ROI, you can use multiple slice masks. You can use three slices typically as a recommended uh, thing, but I'm not going to be sp spending so much time today. I'm just going to use one slice. We click on the, the data and we go to deep learning tool. So what we want to do today is we want to create a new deep learning tool. We don't want to add to an existing model. We want to train an entirely new one. We're going to be using a unit. There's other options here. Um, apparently attention unit is pretty good also. And many of these things are quite good. And you can also use your own architecture, which you can load to Dragonfly. Today, we're just gonna use the well-known and most widely used unit model. It's a segmentation model that we're doing today. In, on this data, we're going to be having three classes and it's a I want to do a 2.5D. In other words, it uses some 3D context. So it looks at the slices before and after the painted slice um, for three slices. So I'm gonna generate that model, which means it's generating the architecture into which we can do the training. Right, so we have class one, two, three. The order of the classes is following the order of the multi ROI. So it's gonna be background red and the colors are gonna be different. So let's just, make the colors the same, or we can even keep the names as well. Background, large fibers. I see I called it um, uh, red fibers, which means actually large fibers, small fibers. So you need to be consistent with your naming and your colors. So let's just make the, the colors the same. and the uh, small fibers, yellow, orange kind of color. Okay, so now we can do go to training. All right, so the input is the denim image channel. The output is the ground truth because that's um, what we're providing as an output, what we want. We're telling the, the, uh, the model what we want as an output and we're gonna be using the mask. So augmentation is important. You can increase the augmentation the more you increase it, the better it gets. It's creating data out of your data. It's creating additional data. So it's flipping data and stretching it and adding noise and things like that. I'm gonna add some noise to it and we're going to be um, using a validation a visual feedback frame, region 
13, which I selected. And there we can go to training. All right, so I'm quite confident this will work um, well over in a reasonably short time. And that's basically how you set up training for a deep learning model traditionally. So all the parameters are up here, um, the model description, the training parameter information, uh, the augmentation information and so on. So the first epoch was already quite not bad, so separating air from fiber. The second one was also slightly better even. Now it's starting to find small fibers. Ah, it's already sort of identified where the small fibers are mainly located at. That's not better than the fifth epoch is not better than the fourth one. Let's have a look how this goes. So as you can see, it's already doing not a bad job for such a short time. Typically, you would lead, leave the model to train for quite a long time. And as I said, you would typically provide more training slices, more training data initially, um, especially if you have data which varies across the object. If you have one area which is brighter than another, you would want to provide um, ground truth data in both of those in order to make the model robust enough for that. But considering the short time that we've been training this, this is actually quite impressive on, on the preview frame, at least. It's not necessarily good on all frames, but that's what you need to check after. And that's why you need to train it even longer than, even if you have a good result on the preview frame, it's still good to train further because it might be uh, improving the model for other areas of the data. Like in the case of fibers, you might be seeing fibers along different orientations. It might be, the model might be working very well for large fibers side facing as we see in the preview here, but it might not be working so well for diagonally facing fibers um, because the, the, the view is different. And that's also one of the reasons why providing more data also improves things. So not bad at all. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop there. It's pretty good. Oh, it's actually got even better now. <laughs> so let's stop off to the next epoch. Okay, let's stop there. All right, so um, let's, uh, what we can do at this point is we can um, close. Yes, I want to save. Um, so let's do a segmentation with deep learning segment with AI. Oh, what I what I actually wanted to show you is we've we've now trained a unit model which is class count three. So. I don't think I gave it a good name, actually. Probably one of these. But the, um, what I wanted to do show you is deep learning tool. If we open it up again, this was the most recent one with red fibers, background, and small fibers. <laughs> the naming is not right, but um, that's the, the correct um, model because it's in the correct order background. Oh, it's not in the correct order. Interesting. Um, anyway, the, 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 um, let me just have a look here. What is the 
date. Yeah, this is the most recent one. So it is this one. We can load this model and let's see if we can. Um, what's the next step here? Go to training, reset, load, save. We can call this, we can call it something else. So we can call it fibers 18 July. Okay, save that. Close. So on a segment with AI, whoops. Uh, let's go to artificial intelligence. Uh, segment with AI. So there it is. Oh, we need to click on the image channel. So we need to go for um, Where is it? Fibers 18 July model. There we go. Sorry for that. So what we can do is we can do a preview and that applies the model to this one slice. And you can also do it to the entire data set um, applied to all slices. I'm not going to do that now, but um, once you've applied it to all slices, you can visualize and you can measure volume fractions and so on. Um, so there's the voxel count in each of these. Um, and you can take, for example, the small fibers and export extract class as ROI and work on it further from there. All right. So that covers how to use the deep learning tool it is possible to use um, either the segmentation wizard or the deep learning tool to get equally good results. It depends on your preference and the deep learning tool is allowing you more freedom, um, I guess, for expert users. And if you're um, wanting to segment separately out of the, not in the context of a segmentation wizard, if you want to create multi ROIs, or if you want to get a segmentation from somebody else and import it, and use that for training. That is maybe easier to use the deep learning tool in that case. Okay, so in the next video, I will do image to image uh, regression model.